turn that bad. Hey guys, welcome to Curio. I make videos about electronics, coding, and everything uh, which piques my curiosity. And anyways, let's get started with the video. There are basically three kinds of ads. Non-intrusive, intrusive, and the kind which want to make you gouge your eyes out. You know the kind. With the tests I've been running since the past 48 hours, I have come to a conclusion that about 40% of total internet traffic from my house, including every device, the devices my parents use, my sisters use, computers, laptops, smart TVs, everything, about 40% of the total traffic is only ads. 40%. There have been some uh, some remedies to solve this too much of ad issue. There are ad blockers on individual devices. You can install ad blockers on your phone, uh, extensions for your browser. Here is a more potent solution to solve this ad problem. Introducing Pi Hole. The Pi in the Pi Hole stands for Raspberry Pi and the Hole stands for the Black Hole. It is basically a black hole for internet advertisements. So Pi-hole is an open source software to start with. It blocks advertisements to any device on the network, smart TVs, phones, any app, uh, laptops, computers, any internet enabled device which downloads ads, the Pi-hole. Grab a Raspberry Pi, put in the Raspbian stretch onto an SD card, install the SD card and slap on a heatsink and plug in your ethernet cable and power your Raspberry Pi. From there, you can either use keyboard and mouse to open up the Raspberry Pi desktop and then go ahead from there, or you can also SSH remotely into your Raspberry Pi and install Pi Hole that way. I SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi and then went to the Pi Hole website and ran the install commands as a root user. Once the script starts running, it installs Pi hole on your Raspberry Pi automatically. In one of those steps, it asks you to set the default uh, DNS service to forward the non ad queries, to forward the queries which are not ads to the proper domain naming service. When we go ahead and type a URL in the browser, it is a human readable form, for example, Amazon.com. We can read it, but in actuality, the server which is running the Amazon.com has a number called the IP address and this translation need to be done from the name to the number and this translation is done by a service called domain naming servers. So whenever you whenever, whenever you write amazon.com your browser contacts the domain naming server and asks it which is what is the IP address of amazon.com and the domain naming server gives it the IP address and then the browser contacts the amazon.com server and loads up the page and that's how DNS queries work. So going back to um, selecting the DNS service, uh, there are multiple DNS services available. You can choose Google DNS, Open DNS, even Cloudflare DNS which has been launched recently and then continue ahead. And at the end you'll be given a password, the admin password so that you can log in to your Pi-hole uh, dashboard and monitor the activity. While the installation process happens, it will show you the IP address of your Raspberry Pi while installing. Uh, note that IP address and once you are finished with installing Pi Hole on your Raspberry Pi, you can go log in into your router, go to the DNS settings and change the default DNS server to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi which you noted down earlier. And it's also a good idea to make the IP address assigned to your Raspberry Pi a static IP address because every time the router reboots it, does, it shouldn't assign a new IP address to your Raspberry Pi. Now open up a browser, type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and go to the IP address slash admin. Once you go to that page, you will find the Pi Hole dashboard. You can log in using the password which it had given earlier during the setup process. Once you log in, you see a chart of a total percentage of blocked queries and the total number of blocked domains. 
this gets frequently updated actively by the Pi-hole community. And as for us now, um, there are more than 120,000 domains which have been blocked. Then you can see the graphs of queries over time and clients. You can also see top blocked domains. You can go to query logs, you can see individual queries which have come to your network and then individually blacklist if any, was, any domain was not blacklisted. There you have it. Um, you have built the pie hole. Have you ever had a web page load ads first and then the website content and which literally annoys you? That never happens anymore. The page load times are faster, there are no pop-up pop annoying ads, there are no more pesky ads in your Android phones which like literally interrupt you in between your any app session and you literally have a much better experience. It literally reduces the number of distractions. Yeah, uh, that's, I think that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is Curio. Stay tuned for more videos. Tell me about what you think about uh, the internet ads in the comment section. And good luck using the internet without ads. Wow. Well, yeah. See you in the next one.